Hello and welcome back everyone to our Magic the Gathering set explorations and in this episode we'll be going through Aether Revolt. Aether and the reason Revolt. why is because, um, well, Kamigawa Neon Dynasty just came out and um, it has a lot of really cool artifacts and explicitly vehicles in it. So I thought, you know what, let's go let's go back to the Kaladesh block and uh, revisit some of the more powerful artifacts and vehicles from this set. Because there are a shit ton of explodingly powerful vehicles in this block, but they are less powerful in this set specifically. To the point where I'm not actually running any vehicles in this. There were a couple that I was looking at that I wanted to run, but... Uh, the uh, colors I'm running, Orzov, don't... R well, white really wants to run vehicles. Uh, specifically, yeah, Boros does. vehicles is what uh, what uh, the block really wants to push. But I'm running Orzov, so although I get a couple of dwarves, I don't get all that many... Uh, I don't really get all that many good pilots. So I understand, according to the text on some of these vehicles, that they intended you to run a Planeswalker as well. However, the only two supported Planeswalkers are in the Selesnia and Dimmer Colors, which we are not running. And those would yeah. be... Although Ajani is really, really nice. Ajani and Tazarit, respectively, yes. We're not running supported colors in this set. We both we both are running colors that don't have a corresponding non-basic land that makes it easier for you to access specific colors. Maybe Gerda also decided, as I did, that Spire of Industry also set appropriate for including, like, steampunk-style magic and other crap in Aether Revolt's wondrous and rich narrative of including the Aether and Energy Counter System. That the Spire of Industry also will allow you to get early game edge in order to win the game. Eh, kind of. It you know, the fact that it's a that it's a pain land for that ability is is kind is kind of questionable. Pain land. It is pain. All right. So as I've already mentioned, I'm gonna uh, I am running uh, Orzov. I'm running a uh, a more a more uh, a more control slash law uh, uh, slash uh, law version of Orzov. Then um, most people would uh, consider running. Most people, when they think of Orzov, think uh, dr uh, think drain, uh, drain and spirit stuff. But uh, although there is some drain in here, there's not all that much. Whereas Cloud is running Simic. Oh, Simic. <sighs> well, I, I don't do you. well with Simic or against Simic, so I'm probably gonna lose this one too. Oh, but let us begin. Yes, I also am running a control style. That is just the type mixture component that the cards demanded of me because because what I had noticed is like what a lot of the metagame wants you to do is it wants you to get your board state set up usually in the form of a one or two drop creature that bears relevance on the game only in the subsequent turns to uh, um, after two then three or four ooh uh, sh Nikes. I have a feeling that if I don't keep this hand, that I will regret it. So I'm going to keep it. Hmm. All right then. I guess I will start because I actually won the die roll. I'm actually winning the die roll more often now. It's nice. Anyway, I'm gonna open with the augmenting automaton. <laughs> oh yes, the automaton cycle. Yes, all of the colors have a corresponding automaton. Green being the worst in my opinion because it costs four to do gobbledygook. I didn't actually notice that, that all that there's a cycle of automatons. I'm running this one because it's got uh, a more expensive version of shade breathing on it. Shade breathing. It is shade breathing. Mm. Needs energy breathing. All right, and I'm gonna put down another planes, and uh, I'm gonna swing at you for one. Uh oh, I don't think Gerd had opened with his colors. I did not open up with my other color, sadly. All right, but I end. That's okay. I didn't open up with my creatures except for one. Here we go. Let's do an island, then tap two to cast the Druid of the Cowl. Okay, then. Time to ramp. Mm, all right then. Um. Hmm. All right. I'm gonna put down a planes, and then I'm gonna swing at you for one with my augmenting automaton. Okay. I'm gonna declare the druid of the cowl as a blocker to block your one-one creature with my one-three. All right. So 
my augmenting automaton is is killed mm -hmm. and then during my main phase two i get to spend three and actually activate the keyword of the of the set revolt with my dead eye harpooner uh-oh if a permanent you control left the battlefield is turned, destroy target tap creature and opponent controls, but I don't control. But you don't creature. have a tapped creature. I cast the wrong critter. God damn it! All right, I'll end. Well, did you have a more correct critter? Oh, I did have a more correct critter, but I'll, I'll keep that. All right. Well, you are one who you you use the touch style of chess more often than I do. If I have a chance to take back a move, you bet your sweet ass I will. I'm going to pay three to cast my automaton, the watchful variety. Ooh. And I'm going to end my turn because you're showing a 2-2 blocker. Mm. All right. <laughs> Dead-eyed dick. That's okay. the name of a Kurt Vonnegut um, novel. Hmm. All right, I'm going to put down another plane, then I'm going to spend three in order to cast decommission on your watchful automaton. Destroy target artifact or enchantment? No. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Unfortunately, I once again missed my revolt trigger. Oh well. I will end. Alright, it's a dead even it's almost a dead even game. Greta has a slight lead. Let's see if it pays off. I'm gonna put down a spire of industry. And then I'm gonna end my turn. Okay then. I can't you I can't tap into the spire of industries pain mana because I don't control an artifact right now. Mm. Okay, then. I'm going to put down yet a fifth uh, planes, and uh, yeah, I'm going to spend three in order to cast the Solemn Recruit. Uh, Solemn Recruit is a 2-2 two -two with double strike. Oh, crap. Mm -hmm. Alright, and then I will end my turn. Really? It only costs three to put that on the battlefield? Usually you got... Yeah, to there is... Uh, the Kaladesh block, although it's only two sets, is notorious for having a, a, an absurd amount of fucking power creep. And yes, the ve it's not just the vehicles and base Kaladesh that are, that are the cause of that. A lot of the Boros critters specifically are way overtuned. I'm going to put down my watchful automaton. Okay, then. And, um... Thinking about it. Yeah, I'm just going to end my turn, because I happen to know that white has some pretty nasty synergy with respect to plus one, plus one counters, or just altering the power and toughness of existing creatures, and you're showing a creature with double strike. That makes you dangerous. Yeah. Speaking of danger, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing at you for four. Well, actually, uh, six, yeah. You're going to swing at me for six. Okay, so I'm going to block the Deadeye Harpooner with my Druid of a Cowl, and then the Solemn Recruit is going to hit me for four with Double Strike. Well, two, uh, two with Double Strike. Now that blockers have been declared, uh -huh. I'm going to spend four in order to cast Inspiring Roar. See, that's that's exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, well, since you put... In, you, you, wait, hold it. You can't you can't activate that with Instant Speed. You're that's right. A, it's that's a sorcery. A sor that's bad. a sorcery. How dare you. Oh. Let's take this a step back. Let's put our pants back on for a second. Okay, so we were in the blocker step. I declared a blocker. Okay, are we moving to the damage step? Yep. Okay. So you uh, take a four, right? I take four from your unblocked Solomon recruit because it has double strike, correct? Mm. I could have swore that Inspiring Roar was an instant. Damn. Mm. Oh, well. Mm. In order to protect my Solomon recruit, because otherwise it's probably going to die next turn, I'm, I'm still going to cast Inspiring Roar. Well, I am going to answer that by calling your card on the stack with negate. Counter target mm -hmm. non-creature spell. All right, then. Woo. Get that crap out of here. And I will end. All right. You're scaring me. Let's keep going. Yeah. Okay, well, now you're wide open, which should mean I get to do something here, especially use my untap stack correctly because it occurs before the beginning of the upkeep. Um, I'm going to put down an island, then I'm going to go in my combat step, and I'm going to swing at you for two. Alright, I'll take two. I noticed that you're not actually using a Jewel of Cowl's uh, mana ability, though. Well, I got, uh, I mean, I mean, for God's sake, I got eight mana on the board. You'd think I would have played something cool by now. Yeah, me too, you know? Well, I don't... Uh, Gerda, this is why, you know, A, you run the correct number of lands, and B, you accept a hand that gives you the correct composition of lands. I'm going to take four from your unblocked Solemn Recruit. Mm. All right. 
And uh, with that, I will end. I'm going to use your end step in order to scry. Pay three. Okay. Scry one with the automaton. View the top card of my library. What is it? I'm going to put that card. I'm going to leave that card on top. That's a good uh -huh. draw. Okay. My turn. Draw that ish. All right. I'm going to put down a forest. I'm going to pay three. One, two, three to cast Trophy Mage. Okay, then. When Trophy Mage enters the board, I search my library for an artifact card with converted mana cost of exactly three. I reveal it, and I put that card in my hand. It's going to be the Life Crafter's Bestiary. Okay, then. This card goes in my hand. Gives you a gives you a continuous scry. Nice. This card is... Yeah, I, I love this card. Li uh, pay three to put the Life Crafter's Bestiary on the table, so that will start giving me benefits at the beginning of my next turn. Um... And then, uh, I really should just let this go. Yeah, I'm going to end my turn. All right, then. My move. Ooh. As awesome as that card is, I don't have, I don't have the black that I need for it. So, I'm going to swing with my Deadeye Harpooner. Okay, I'm going to elect a block with the Druid of the Cowl. 1-3. All right, then. And, cool. uh, yep, I will end. All right, awesome. All right, beginning of upkeep time, I will scry one with the Lifecrafters Bestiary. I'm going to put this card on the bottom of my deck. Okay, and then draw a face, draw a card. Uh, hold it. It's still my upkeep, so that means I can pay three, two, three. I'm going to scry with the Watchful Automaton. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to leave this card on top of my deck and then draw it for the draw step. Yep. I'm going to pay three, two, three. It's another trophy mage, but that's not all, all. Right. Now that I had cast a creature spell, I can pay a green, and I get to draw a card. Now to resolve the trophy mage, I get another artifact card from my deck that has converted mana cost exactly three. I reveal it and I put it in my hand. It's going to be the implement of examination. Ooh. Let's just take a closer look at this specimen. I'm going to put down an uh, island for my land play. Yes, island is a good play. And then I'm going to... Uh, hmm. Let me think here. Yeah, I'm going to end my turn. All right, then. You really need to draw that swamp, like, right the hell now. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Okay, so I'm going to spend two in order to play my auda my Audacious Infiltrator, the which is very nice. Can't be blocked by artifact creatures, damn it. Yeah, that's okay. You only have the one. Yeah. And I'm going to swing with my Deadeye Harpooner. Okay, I'm going to block with my Druid of the Cow. Okay, then. Hmm. And uh, I will end. Coolest. Beginning of upkeep time. Let's keep scrying. I'm going to put this card on the bottom of my deck. I'm going to pay three. Two. Three. Scry one with the Watchful Automaton. Um, yeah, I'm going to leave this card on top, and then I'm going to draw it for my draw step. Okay, then. Cool. Um... That's really cool. So now I get to... I think I can pull this off. Hang on. I gotta count. Uh, one, two, two. One, two, schwa. Ya, ta, ta. Yep, I can do this. Okay, so I'm gonna pay three. Three greens, specifically. And I'm gonna cast the Implement of Examination. Okay, then. And then I'm gonna cast with another Aether Revolt keyword. Improvise. My, I, my artifacts can help me cast this spell because these tapped artifacts each produce one colorless for each one I tap. Also paying another two blues to cast Reverse Engineer. Okay. I draw three cards. Hell yes. Very nice. Thank you. Um, I have not made a land play yet, so I'm going to put down a forest and, uh, and then I'm going to end my turn. We're kind of at a stalemate right now. Hmm. You need an answer for my solemn recruit, Mr. Cloud. You need a goddamn second color. 
I do have my goddamn second color final. <laughs> well Unfortunately, done. Unfortunately, both the all three of the cards in my hand are double black. Oh, which my is sad. Sweet lord. All right, so I'm gonna swing with my Dead Eye Harpooner and my Audacious Infiltrator. Okay, um, I'm gonna block the Dead Eye Harpooner with the Druid of the Cowl. I'm gonna block the Audacious Infiltrator with a Trophy Mage. All right. So we go to damage, and my Audacious Infiltrator is deaded as is your trophy mage. Then during the end step, a uh, Solemn Recruit's uh, Revolt Trigger activates, giving him a 1-1 one, one counter. Oh, yeah, that's right. Damn it. Mm. All right, and I will end. Suicidal, suicidal. Beginning when of upkeep say time. it's over. Beginning of upkeep. Look at that ish. What is it? Oh, fucking hell. <laughs>